Alright, hello guys, Alex here. So today I would like to show you some evidence that I have found regarding forced labor. Alright, so first of all, uh, I'm, go I'm going to show you one interesting picture. Okay, so you may want to ask, this might be a cotton field in Xinjiang, right? But what's new with it? Well, let me ask you one simple but basic question. How to supervise people who are being forced to work in such a vast field? By doing this, like how British colonists was doing to Tanzanians in 19th centuries? Or this, like how Louisiana police was doing to the prisoners in the United States in 2018? The second picture is from a Guardian's report in August 2018. As you can see, U.S. inmates claim retaliation by prison officials as a result of multi-state strike. Inmates organized a strike which began on 21st August to call attention to both virtually unpaid prisoner labor which they likened to modern slavery and overcrowded conditions. Anyway, let's get back to our previous question. If the CCP want to supervise people in such a vast cotton field, which methods should they take? The first method seems unrealistic in today's world, right? So how about the second? Well, let me ask you another simple but basic question. How many armed places the Xinjiang Authority need to hire? And how much money they need to pay to those armed places in order to control half a million people who are being forced to work. So this number, half a million, is not made up by me. It's also according to Guardian's report. As you can see, Xinjiang more than half a million forced to pick cotton, reports suggest. Originally, I believe the report regarding forced labor in Xinjiang was written by Adrian Zenz, right? Here comes another question. Even if CCP somehow managed to hire, let's say, hundreds of thousands of police officers and uh, able to pay for their salaries. Why I haven't seen such picture in Western media's report regarding forced labor in Xinjiang cotton fields? What I do find is picture like this. So let's compare two Guardian's report. The left one is prisoners in the US and the right one is forced labor in Xinjiang. Which one looks more likely to be the evidence of forced labor? On top of that, beside Guardian, I have also found that this picture in many other reports about Xinjiang forced labor, including CNN, SBS, and of course, Adrian Zenz. The problem is very deep because uh, the Chinese state is trying to put the uh, Uyghurs to labor. Um, they need to be busy and preoccupied. Children are being separated from parents and boarding schools. Parents are being put to full-time work. Because if you work in a Chinese factory or on a cotton field, you can't go to a mosque and you can't participate in traditional community or religious activities. Nevertheless, this picture is not only appeared in the report from the West, but also in Chinese news. This is an article published on a Chinese platform. However, it has nothing to do with uh, forced labor, but mainly about the harvest season of cotton in Xinjiang Hami. And if we scroll down, we can see the picture again. But we could not say in the Western media's report is this picture. The same woman looks like Chinese was picking cotton while smelling. <laughs> So why don't Western media and Adrian Zenz use this picture in their report? Because she looks like Han Chinese? Or she looks happy? Would you still believe their narrative about forced labor in Xinjiang? To tell you the truth, in Xinjiang, a lot of seasonal cotton picking workers are actually Han Chinese from other provinces such as Henan, Gansu and Sichuan. The reason behind it is very simple. Because during the harvest season, we need more people. But Xinjiang is not a densely populated area. Let me show you some clips 
of cotton picking worker in Xinjiang. You you come from where? I'm from Sichuan. What's your name? I'm called Ren Bu Zhi. Oh, you're called Ren Bu Zhi. 啊、哦，好的，哎，那太难了。你今年有多大？五十。五十啊！你为什么来新疆摘棉花呀？因为有钱。因为啥？靠勤看，靠勤看。待在组里面这么辛苦，不为钱为什么呀？他们现在都在上学还是在干嘛？嗯，都在上学吧。有什么想对他们说的话，然后是通过通过通过电视让他们。Anyway, I have a genuine suggestion for the Guardian and other anti-China Western media's experts like Adrian Zenz. Next time, if if you want to fabricate fake news, go find a better picture rather than this one. Okay. Anyway, what I want to emphasize today is that the forced labor really exists. But I don't think it exists in Xinjiang cotton field, but somewhere else. Other than those prisoners in Louisiana, the U.S. authority also admit that the forced labor really exists in the United States. This is the official website of the Department of Homeland Security, a ministry of the U.S. government. As you can see, forced labor in the United States. Despite our nation's foundation in freedom guaranteed in our constitution, forced labor exists and persists even today. Victims of forced labor in the United States can be citizens, or they can originate from almost every region of the world, regardless whether they have entered the United States with or without legal status. So, as a country who has a long history of forced labor, why the United States is accusing China of forced labor in Xinjiang? I think our special guest today may be more capable than me to answer this tricky question. Hello, Mr. President.、Uh, would you like to tell us about what's your opinion on this matter? In the history of each nation, each nation, each country, there are many very тяжелых, драматических и кровавых событий. Но когда мы оцениваем других людей или когда оцениваем даже других другие государства, другие народы, мы всегда как бы смотримся как будто в зеркало. Мы всегда там видим себя, потому что всегда перекладываем на другого человека то, чем мы сами дышим. чем мы являемся по сути. И вот, знаете, я вспоминаю в детстве мы в, во дворе, когда спорили друг с другом, мы говорили так: кто как обзывается, тот так и называется. И это не случайно, это не просто детская поговорочка и шутка.、Вот. Смысл очень глубокий в этом психологический. Мы всегда в другом человеке видим свои собственные качества и думаем, что он такой же, как и мы, и из этого исходя оцениваем его действия и даем оценку вообще. Что касается американского истеблишмента, не, не американского народа в целом, там главным образом очень много честных, порядочных, душевных людей, которые хотят жить с нами в мире и дружбе. Мы знаем об этом и дорожим этим, и будем на них опираться в будущем. Но что касается американского истеблишмента, то руководящего правящего класса, то его сознание складывалось в известных и довольно непростых условиях. Ведь освоение европейцами американского континента было связано с истреблением местного населения, с геноцидом, как сегодня говорят, прямым геноцидом индийских племен. Затем последовал очень жесткий, большой, тяжелый период рабства, рабовладения, очень жестокий. И все это идет по истории до сегодняшнего дня, сопровождает жизнь Соединенных Штатов. Иначе откуда взялось бы движение Black Lives Matter? Жизни черных имеют значение. Well said, Mr. President.